So, <laughs> what's up y'all? My name is Jessie and today we are going to talk about leaving booktube to become a stripper as research for my novel. <sighs> it is weird in a good way filming after four months, a four month hiatus, which has literally been killing me. I have not been watching booktube. I have not been watching YouTube as a whole. I have been MAA, I have not been participating on Bookstagram. The only thing that I kind of did was Summerween and I fell off halfway through. It's, I've been, I've been gone. I have been with my patrons. Those are the only people who have really been seeing me on the internet and I haven't talked about my absence, but I am ready after having four months to figure out my life and also to figure out what I want to do with my YouTube channel, what I want to do with my booktube channel. It has given me that the time that I needed and now I am ready to speak to y'all about it. So we're going to talk about the reasons why I had to step out of this space. There are more than one. Some of them are because of the space itself. Some of them are because of things in my personal life, things unavoidable. And I'm excited to talk about all of them. So let's just get the, the difficult one out of the room. All of these things combined to cause me to step out of this space. So I, I can't really say that there was one thing in particular that was a bigger factor than anything else. The one that did cause me to step away the most immediately was that I lost a dog, Akasha, my Belgian Malinois, who you have seen grow up on this channel throughout her four years is fine. She is still with us, but my family dog had to be put down. Her name was Sasha. She was 12 years old. It was time. She was in a lot of pain. I took that very hard. I did not take that well. And I was in no position to film content. So that caused the step away. And I was so wildly depressed. Now I am in a better place with her passing. I'm happy for her. I can't wait to meet her again. I can think about her without grief without feelings of guilt that I somehow could have done something to keep her alive. And now I can just celebrate her life and look at the photos and the videos that we took, especially on the day that she was put down. I took some really nice photos two hours before she was laid to rest. And I look at them so often. I just, I absolutely love them. In addition to my family passing away, my sibling ended up moving in. They didn't end up moving until June. So we've been living together for a couple months now and loving it. It's just, it's so great. Actually today they just got hired at their first job in Minnesota. They came from Texas. So I'm really, really happy for him. I can't wait. We're about to do some stuff. And it's just, it's been so wonderful having them here. Akasha loves him. It's great. There was a lot that had to go into prepping for this move, however. So I was working my other job, doing my thing, absolutely not able to participate in booktube. Also, we, we as a family had to go through a really rough time of conflict within the family and my patrons know about what was going on, you know, what is going on, but our family was rocked in a really major way, in a way that made me rethink everything about myself. My trust in my own mental wellness and mental stability. As those of you who've been watching this channel for a while know that last year I was diagnosed with DID and I was having an incredibly difficult time on a psychiatric level. It was a very scary time. We didn't understand what was causing my illness, my symptoms, etc. And trying to get a diagnosis, trying to get things figured out was terrifying, especially because I didn't want a diagnosis. I just, I wanted things to go back to the way that they were. I wanted to function the way that I was used to. I was experiencing a lot of loss of time, a lot of cognitive delays, and just so many other things that made everyday functioning so difficult. I won't go into further detail because that is not the focus of this video. However, I am in so much of a better place with everything now. I can't describe how much your comments helped me through that period. Unfortunately though, this year, in addition to Sasha passing and the move, I also have been struggling very, very intensely with chronic pain. I went to the ER three times and 
I have had issues with the shoulder and now my neck and spreading um, for seven years now. I've been in physical therapy off and on for seven years. And as somebody who is a retired ballet, West African movement, multidiscipline dancer, not having my body do the things that I'm used to it doing has been really difficult. The things that they've been doing, I've been doing my whole life. Specifically not understanding why this is happening. And finally, in, I wanna say June, I was diagnosed with a slip, slipped, I have a protruding disc in my C4 and C5. That disc is causing a lot of issues. I also have some other things going on, a lot of nerve issues, and I'm about to start getting some cortisol injections in my shoulder, but they have me on a really good program like physical therapy. My medication is figured out like, now we have answers and they are figuring out my health moving forward, but I was in agony. I went with, I went for two weeks with a rib out of place. Had no idea. <laughs> that my rib was out of place because these things are causing so much issues. It's throwing like everything else out of alignment, right? So my chiropractor was astounded when she realized like how long I had had it out, but I have had this issue for so long that my pain tolerance is too high like it's not normal it's not something to be excited about um and she was like you got you really need to get this figured out because you should not be functioning at that level of pain and be used to it like that's not acceptable so that has now that that is getting resolved and my everyday pain level is so much better it is i'm ready i'm finally ready i was like okay i'm ready to go back to youtube and the other reason the reason that I had to step away from YouTube that was really frustrating me a lot every single day is the hypergendering of BookTube. BookTube used to be a space where th there was really inclusive language about gender. We went through, years ago, we kind of went through the awareness of neo-pronouns and people were using them all right, people were reading trans authors, doing their thing. People were realizing that they had gotten into some unhealthy gendering patterns and were working that out, just being a little bit more inclusive, trans spectrum wise in this space. And I was like, yes, as somebody who's been out as non-binary since 2012, that meant a lot to me in being able to be comfortable here. And um, unfortunately, after Hot Book Girl Summer came and the rise of the word girly, there has been a sharp decline in the safety of booktube for trans booktubers and fans um, and subscribers and people who just care about the community and like to watch the community. Um, on Instagram, like, for example, the norm now on Bookstagram is for posts to begin with, hey girlies, or same on Instagram reels, a lot of new booktubers, a lot of booktubers are now adopting that language and just assuming that their entire audience is female and um, identifies as a woman and or is cis. And then when, you know, called out on this or I kind of asked to be a little bit more inclusive in the language. They'll say things like, well, girly is gender neutral. And these are also people who are consistently not reading trans authors, or if they are reading trans authors, they're reading one of the five really well-known ones who have popular books. And overall, I just started feeling less and less included in this space. I wasn't seeing trans people being invited to participate in things like readathons and, and in reading sprints and just being invited to do things publicly, visibly in the booktube community. All of that has just made me, it really turned me off to the space, to be perfectly honest. A lot of times when, especially given a lot of times when I've been asked to guest on someone else's channel or do a book club or something, it's usually racialized or trans in some way. Trans booktubers, trans readers, etc are only seen as valuable when our transness is relevant to the book that people currently care about or whatever. Being a girl reader has finally become popular, right? And so many girl readers were just vilified for liking reading. And now reading is cool. Reading is sexy, it is fun, it is everywhere, book talk is a thing, etc. And I love that girls are getting to celebrate being girls who read and getting to hype each other 
but still I'm just not seeing them give that same hype to non-binary people who read. Sharing other non-binary booktubers and non-binary bookstagrammers bookstagram posts, it's only ever other cis girls. And I personally just, it's at the point where I'm uncomfortable with it, especially, and it sucks because I want women to have spaces to celebrate being women. Like, I think that's great, but we don't have to leave non-binary people and trans people behind and men also. Like the lack of inclusion for black male booktubers in here on bookstagram has really 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 bothered me for a while and after the rise of the term girly specifically book girlies it's again the idea that like black male bookish aesthetics aren't valuable the idea that trans booktubers aesthetics aren't valuable the idea there has become this idea that there is a certain type of person who reads now and i don't think that it's healthy for all of us and personally as somebody who has already been dealing with chronic pain and family issues and struggling with their youtube channel for a couple years uh, just not feeling supported and etc etc that was kind of the last straw for me personally so i now for my own mental health I have now decided that I'm just not going to be really engaging with booktubers who use super gendered terms to address their entire audience all the time, really consistently. Booktubers who aren't reading trans authors, booktubers who are only boosting a certain other type of booktuber or a certain type of reader. For me personally, I just need to take a step back from that. I love seeing girls get celebrated. But as a trans person, I cannot afford to let myself only see girls celebrated. Because when do I get to celebrate myself? So I'm excited to be finding friends and community on booktube that kind of walk their talk about actually being the people that they say they are in terms of inclusion. People who will call out or call in other booktubers for using gendered, super gendered language. Like I'm not saying you can never say the term book girly. Of course you can, of course. But let's maybe be mindful of how does it feel maybe for a non-binary person who really loves following you, but all of your posts start with book girlies and they feel invisible. Following and being around people who create content and actually care about the people who are consuming their content is important to me, is mo more important to me than it was before. And I think already it was pretty important. And that's part of like why it was so hard to see people not speaking up about it. Like it was, it was me talking about my issue with the compulsory book girly language and feeling uncomfortable that cis booktubers, especially cis booktubers who are in a position to, um, to be listened to weren't participating in that ab advocacy. Um, anyway, but now I, I'm not gonna let shit bother me, okay? I'm just not. With the exception of booktube becoming disturbingly trans exclusive, the other issues that caused me to step away from YouTube have been resolved. But the fun reason why I left, the good reason, okay? The reason for me filming this entire video is because I am writing a novel. I am writing a novel titled Suddenly in Love and I have been working on it for about, since the beginning of the year, yeah, so about six, seven months. It features two studs who are best friends, but both are madly in love with the other. But studs dating each other, masculine of center women dating each other is often considered very taboo and one of them is a stripper. The book itself is about the difficulty that masculine women face with admitting that they like each other. And it also is about what it means to be a black stripper, what it means to be a black dancer, especially a lesbian black dancer, and how toxic expectations in studhood dictate that you do not get to do anything feminine. It's about the difficulties that masculine black women face in society, the barriers between black lesbians loving each other and how we can overcome them. It also is about sex work and stigmatization of sex work, shame associated with sex work, and how even within queer communities, we uphold ideas of femininity and masculinity that are worth challenging. The book itself is a lot about masculinity. It's about how even a drop of femininity is seen as absorbing and taking away of masculinity because we as a society are terrified of the feminine. And so there's this idea that if you are a stud, but also a stripper, 
then you're not really a stud. You're not really masculine. You're not this, that, or the third. Because this drop of femininity over here overshadows, takes all of that away, means that your masculinity is a mirage. As somebody who is a stud, but a stripper, I really wanted to write about that. So where the title gets a little clickbaity is that I've actually been a stripper my entire time on YouTube. I've been on YouTube for seven years and I've been a stripper the entire time. I stripped mainly part-time here and there, but in the last year, especially year, year and a half, as my YouTube content just wasn't doing as well as I wanted it to, and I was, and I have been feeling very alienated in, <laughs> in this space, I had to lean more into dancing, and I have found a life in dancing that is very different from my own. And getting into that level of dancing, getting into the level of dancing where we're talking about multiple thousands of dollars, where we're talking about how do you obtain and lure high-end clients into the club? How do you maintain regulars? idea of what stripping is and being introduced more to the underbelly of stripping the drug sex rock and roll you see in the movies and in tv as i started doing that i noticed the way that people in my personal life would react while also being somebody who was very active dating and as somebody who dates women it caused me to think a lot about the politics of being a stripper another part of the reason why i had to step away from youtube is because Hiding being a stripper is hard, especially when you're as in the lifestyle as I am. So as y'all know, those of you who've been on this channel, I like my hair short, the back and the sides of my head are always bald, 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 bald. I like my top very, very short. I like to wear baggy clothes. I just, I operate a certain way in my own personal gender expression. But as somebody who's really, really hot and heavy in the traveling shopping world, to dance, wearing going wings, to private parties, very, very typical. As I move, maintain, as I move into that stereotypical, also, they fall off easily. Even if you have methods of gluing them down, etc., it's still easier to rip off a wig, for example, have a wig fall off than it is if you have braided in extensions. So because of that, my presentation has changed. And as a person who is very comfortable in their own skin, and also, I'm not gonna lie, I feel like money is attached to my relationship with my gender, but we'll get into that later. And also as somebody who doesn't see feminine presentation as inherently submissive, because I'm not sure where that idea came from. Yeah, we are. It came from men. I don't feel threatened by my change in presentation, even if it's not what I would be choosing for myself if I weren't writing this novel. But I chose to throw myself into this industry, not only to have stability, but more importantly, to sit with these two girls and to be a part of their life. And all of the experiences that I have been having, I have been channeling and putting into my novel. The things that I experience on the day is wild. Um, Dancing is both nothing and everything like what you think, more so nothing. I also just wasn't ready to share that part of my life, to know that I would be accepted even with the nuance of me. And also it just was private, it was personal. But I'm enjoying living more loudly as a dancer. I'm enjoying dancing more than I did before I started writing this book. And the experiences are just absolutely wild. I'm talking about a man came into our club and spent $60,000 the other day. I also really wanted a space where I could talk about the difficult things that dancing experiences, not just the barriers that Black dancers face. If you want to hear more about Suddenly in Love, I share excerpts with my patrons and we also do writing sprints. I also give my patrons access to the other novel that I'm writing, which is a Robin Hood retelling marketed for teens. I personally am so excited for Suddenly in Love. It is the book that I've been working on the most lately and I just couldn't be more thrilled. I do want to take this time to thank my patrons for hanging in there with me as I've been going through all of these struggles and changes in the last year. Two years rather, because it's been a really long journey. I appreciate y'all for sticking by me even when I wasn't as active as I wanted to be. I love the space that we've created together, so thank you. 
As far as Suddenly in Love goes, I couldn't be more in love with this story. I feel like it is flying on to the page. And even though I have a lot of similarities with the character who is a dancer, she is so unlike me and I'm inspired by her every day. Living as her, getting my hair done, my eyelashes, traveling to dance, doing things that she would do in order to be a part of her lifestyle has been fabulous. And I'm getting a little headache, so I'm not going to go into more about Suddenly in Love than I already have. But these women are absolutely remarkable and I can't wait for you to meet them. I think that that's all that I have. As far as this channel goes moving forward, I'm going to be including a lot more of my dancing lifestyle. So you will hear more about Suddenly in Love and the other book that I'm writing throughout time, but it's just gonna be so much easier for me to film booktube content now that I won't have to explain why I'm wearing makeup suddenly in the next frame or why I'm putting on makeup, getting dressed, leaving the house at like midnight or whatever. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you are a person who's been on my YouTube channel since the beginning or for a while, I just wanna say that I appreciate you a lot. I appreciate you sometimes more often than I appreciate myself, which is a habit I'm trying to break. And if you are new, I hope that you stay unlike my father.